Hi everyone, this is a fashion analysis of three looks from the Balenciaga book and it's a first for Patreon but you might recognize it from some of my YouTube fashion chats and I'm going to look at the fashion images from a pattern cutter's point of view analyzing how it's actually put together and how the pattern might work by drawing it out on flat and I thought um, it might be nice to connect this to the drafting tutorial because both of um, a lot of you wanted to have both more fashion analysis and more drafting tutorials so tomorrow I'm going to put a poll out and those of you who are in the drafting designer tier will get to vote on which of those um, Balenciaga looks I will actually draft so let's have a look at the book so let's have a look at three of the Balenciaga body styles oh first of all I really want to show you this um, this is like Dior's version of the bar suit. Um, there's different details. I quite like what he's done with the black velvet edging everywhere. It's quite stunning. Um, and really nice dart lines. But have, let's have a look at slightly more variable styles. And the first one is this really nice um, day dress in a wool. They call it beige, it's sort of a yellowy sandy colour. And it's a really nice wool to work with. Um, I've got some here and I think it's pretty similar because it's got that beautiful, hope you can see it, it's got a really nice texture. So one side is just flat with a tiny bit of texture and one has a real slub. So it's actually quite thick but really lightweight. So it's got that sort of um, really nice drapiness um, which is really used well on the back and you could easily make so you can make it in any wool as long as not too heavy you could make it um, in a double knit so in a milano or a scuba knit that look nice or even in a cotton um, for day wear it's quite um, a smart dress but what i love about it there's lots of details you can add to any top um, and change the dress around a bit so i'm really gonna draw it out for you and this is from the early 60s, so you can see that sort of column shape from the 60s really emerging. Um, so it is a really simple dress. At the top it's just got um, a, um, it's the same construction as a roll neck. So it's just one piece of fabric, probably cut on... So I'm seeing, I think it might be even cut on the straight, in which case it would be more of a stand collar because it be sh so roll collar be straight stand collar would be shaped and that's cut in the bias and the roll uh, the stand collar is cut in the straight so i think this is a stand collar which is then becomes a nice knot at the front and what i like about it is it probably underneath this it's got so it the, the collar stops being stitched onto the dress probably somewhere around here and then you've probably got a keyhole opening with a button or um, hook and eye and then the collar knots on top of it so um, he's thinking about how can you get in and out of the dress and what I love about the shoulders is they're really narrow shoulder shoulders so it's an interesting dress because would you wear with a jacket on top or would you wear like a base layer underneath um, I think that's why I think this would make a really nice top brow in a dress because you could just wear it um, with a jacket or cardigan or a jumper underneath and um, sort of lay it up and make it probably make it to complete the A-line but what I love about it is the, I'm going to show you the other side, the armour at the front is quite ordinary but at the back it's straight and it comes out a bit. Um, so the back actually sort of curves out and then it goes like this and this is where Balenciaga takes something really simple like a shift dress, tubular daytime dress um, and makes it something a bit more unusual and then it's, a, it's got a bit of fitting, oh that's slightly weird, um, it's, got, it's probably a bit longer it's got a bit of fitting at the back, so it's got that sort of um, gathered detail which stops it being too tinty. So from the side you can actually see 
it's got a bit more of a silhouette and then from the front it probably has a bit of it as well but it's a very gentle silhouette and then probably a bit longer um but it's just really nice i just put pockets in and it's just that line coming from the back to the front and you could just make it a top a short top or you could actually cut it here but it just makes a nice detail and then the back is quite interesting as well so again you got your stand collar and then it's sort of and i it, i saw a dress i can imagine audrey happen wearing and then it's got just these gathers at the waist so that from the back it probably has some fitting and what's really interesting and what i couldn't quite work out it's got tiny gathers so he's either put a yoke at the back and then you've got really small volume gathers which create the volume but for the back but then at the waist it's treated as really big chunky so they're making a statement these are these are more these are quite gentle they're creating volume they're well behaved but these are much more sculptural in balenciaga i mean he's probably got like a tubular insert where you pull like your rope or your elastic through so he hasn't got the fine gathers but it's got the flexibility does have also really nice Data, data dress where you can pick, pick lots of pattern cutting details to make it your own by this that Balenciaga twist. Let's have a look at another one. Oh, I haven't lost the thing yet. I have, I apologize. Where is it? Oh. This isn't as Balenciaga, I think because it's fitted so it's from the 19 um late 1960s but it's got quite an early balenciaga feel so it's got more like a 1940s feel and um, but it's reinterpreted beautifully and it's got all the it's got the two typical one piece sort of um very flat balenciaga collar he always does beautifully um it stops it being too tailored so i always think Dior is more, has a sort of typical tailored collar. Um, if you look at some Balenciaga collars, they're quite um, flat, um, which makes them really nice. And then it's got that, um, like a little extra bit. So you're sort of what would be your reverse flat. And then it's got typical sort of short collar. And it's a really nice wall fill which makes it easy to see all the details so you can see how it sits like a normal collar but then instead of being a double pressed to the collar and just going down it nips in at the waist with a big button and then it comes out slightly bigger and rounder so i think it's it's something we don't really see this balance like that much but whenever i love is it's all one piece this because then this flap goes up and into the armhole so it's like this so i'm just drawing it as i go along so it's a bit rough so it's like i mean it's got um on the other side you can see it's got exactly the same detail it's got that flap again and then what I like about it is when this would probably um, be like that and then even might have a pocket in there so that might be your pocket line and it has like um, the pocket back either side so it's he's sort of it's like his interpretation um, it looks very sort of historical influence I like it Quite, the UN Westwood has done quite a lot of stuff like that where the pockets have come out um, and then it's just hidden underneath and then it continues so um, that's a really nice detail that sort of flap and you could um, amend it but the other thing I really like is this dart and you would have to sort of work on your bodies where is it actually coming from because it's either coming from your neckline 
So it probably does something, it comes, because it, it seems to sort of go with the edge of your collar. Do you see? It sort of follows the edge of your collar, but I think it probably actually comes from down there. You would sort of have to try out of work, uh, how it works. So I think that's a really nice, interesting style. And then the sleeves are really normal. Um, you can see the tailoring, so you can see how I've eased the whole sleeve head in to give it a beautiful rounded corner. And we've talked about it before, I think. You have to do some pre-stitching and pre-pressing and steaming to get it into that beautiful round head. And let's have a look at one last look, which is quite out there as well. But like the jacket, it's just got some nice details. And this is from the 1940s, and you can see it's very formal, it's a quite early Balenciaga. Um, it hasn't got that 1960s simplicity yet, but I thought about it. it's got really nice drafting detail. So I'm going to concentrate more on the drafting detail. Um, but it would make a beautiful daytime dress, and you could just use the two fabric, the same fabric, maybe two different colors or something. Um, so if you did it out of sh um, men's shirting, you could use different bits of stripe, stripe or something. So it's just a little detail um, to create a fit. But the reason I like it is that it's, a quite, um, it's got a really pretty little collar, um, which is probably a one-piece collar, but it's really tiny. And then rather than your typical shirting collar, it just sort of cut away and round so it looks it look it's like a shirt version of a peter pan collar to a certain degree and it's just sort of quite delicate vibe quite formal i think it's got that um nice mix and then it's got quite a lot of um gavis and the sleeve hat so it's quite a normal sleeve for balenciaga and then it's got a just normal button stand with quite a few nice covered button and it stops there so you have a side zip somewhere else to actually get in and what would be nice if you wanted to make an evening dress like that is to use if you did off satin is to use one side of a satin and then just do this stripes for example in the wrong side and I get, let me get your fabric so this is an i think it's actually swiss um and it's a satin and then it's backed in a uh, crepe so it's got that real sort of texture you can see the lines of the fabric and real thickness and you can really play around with using both sides so that's really nice for evening trousers as well for I know even um, like a shirt and you can really just highlight basically stuff in satin but it would be exactly the same black so if you find a fabric like that, that would be quite stunning. But I mostly just loved the construction because it's about creating two style lines. So I've talked quite often about a style line, which quite often goes very near the bust point or on the bust point, or darts. So everything is always on the bust point. I think this, this what I like about it is the bust point is sort of nearly in the middle of the two of them. So when you construct it, you have to think a bit about um, how you do it. There's a little trick to do that. Um, so that's a sort of third, slightly more unusual Ballingslager um, choice. But I thought it was quite interesting drafting-wise. Um, I hope you enjoyed them. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's actually that's not Balenciaga at all? You want to see the nice big 1960s dresses. And then tomorrow, for those of you on the top tier, on the drafting designers, I'm going to put a poll out and you can vote which one you would like to see drafted. But that's it for me. Thank you very much.